Robert Mounts discusses Paul's teachings in the context of the relationship between strong and weak Christians, particularly as it is presented in chapter 15. Paul identifies himself with the strong Christians, those who have a deep faith that allows them to partake in activities that they previously considered ceremonially unclean. These strong Christians have moved beyond certain ceremonial obligations, but Paul emphasizes that they are still bound by the obligations of love. Mounts points out that it's not enough for the strong Christians to merely tolerate the weaker ones. Instead, they should actively support and bear the weaknesses of those who are still growing in their faith. This is a call for understanding and patience, rather than dismissing the concerns or limitations of the weaker believers. Paul's teachings caution the strong against neglecting or overlooking the hesitations of the weak. Instead, they should be supportive, even if it might seem that the weaker members are less productive in the assembly. This perspective aligns with other teachings of Paul, such as in Galatians 6, 1-2, where believers are encouraged to bear one another's burdens. The overarching message is one of unity, understanding, and mutual support within the Christian community. Also, strong believers should prioritize the well-being of their neighbors over their own desires, aiming to nurture their spiritual growth. This selfless approach is rooted in the teachings of 1 Corinthians 10, 24, 33, emphasizing the importance of prioritizing the needs of others. Jesus Christ stands as the epitome of this self-sacrificial attitude. He, being the Son of God, did not live to serve his own interests, but chose the path of the suffering servant. This sentiment is echoed in Psalm 69, 9, where the weight of insults directed at God is felt by Christ. Paul interprets this verse as Christ being the speaker, addressing God. Moreover, the essence of Christ's selflessness is highlighted in Mark 10:45, where he accentuates his mission to serve others and offer his life as a ransom. This theme is consistent in other scriptures like 1 Corinthians 10, 33, 11, 1, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, and Philippians 2, 5, 8 all underscoring Christ's unparalleled self-denial for the sake of humanity. Furthermore, Mounts affirms the enduring relevance of Scripture for believers, even in the modern era. He highlights that everything written in the past was not just for its contemporary audience, but remains pertinent today. The reason for this timeless relevance is that Scripture addresses our most profound human needs. It provides both endurance and encouragement, which are essential for maintaining hope. Mounts cites Morris, pointing out that this isn't about believers mustering these qualities on their own, but rather recognizing them as gifts from God. The message is that the challenges faced today become manageable when viewed in the light of God's promises for a brighter future. God communicates comfort and encouragement through His Word, directly reaching those who are open to it. Thus, distancing oneself from Scripture is akin to ignoring the comforting voice of a caring Heavenly Father. Last but not least in Romans 15, 5, 6, Paul expresses his hope for the Roman church to achieve a spirit of unity. He doesn't necessarily want everyone to have the same opinion, as evident from his discussion on the weak and the strong. Instead, he wishes for unity and perspective, rooted in the teachings and values of Christ Jesus. As believers grow closer to Christ, they inherently grow closer to each other. This unity among Christians results in harmonious praise to God, where every individual voice contributes to a collective worship. This unity and praise are likened to a family gathering, where the adopted children of God, the believers, offer their praises to the Father of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, Mounts delves into Paul's teachings on the dynamics between strong and weak Christians, especially in Romans chapter 15. Paul, associating himself with the strong believers, refers to those with a profound faith that enables them to engage in activities once deemed ceremonially unclean. However, Paul underscores that these believers are still bound by love's obligations. Mounts asserts that strong Christians should not just tolerate, but actively support the weaker ones, echoing Paul's call for understanding, patience and unity. This sentiment is consistent with Paul's other teachings like Galatians 6, 1-2, which advocates for bearing each other's burdens. Strong believers are urged to prioritize others' spiritual well-being over their desires, reflecting the selfless nature of Jesus Christ. Christ, the Son of God, exemplified this self-sacrificial attitude as seen in scriptures like Mark 10.45 and Philippians 2.5.8. In addition, Mounts underscores the timeless relevance of scripture. He believes that scriptures, while written in the past, remain pertinent today because they address profound human needs, offering endurance, 
encouragement, and hope. This perspective is supported by Morris, who views these qualities as divine gifts rather than self-generated attributes. Lastly, in Romans 15, 5, 6, Paul's aspiration for the Roman church is unity, not uniformity. He desires unity in perspective, anchored in Christ's teachings. As believers draw nearer to Christ, they naturally become more united with each other, leading to collective worship and praise. This harmonious unity is likened to a familial gathering, where believers, as God's adopted children, offer praises to Jesus Christ's Father.